We're at 3.5a and we're going to talk about placement of negative signs and quotients. And we're going to talk about negative fractions. So here we have a negative 10 fifths. Negative 10 fifths is a rational number. So remember, a rational number can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. We have an integer here and an integer here. And it's written as a fraction as long as the denominator is not zero. We have the dividend over the divisor. Because remember, fractions are division problems. We have 10 divided by 5. And we can say we have a negative 10 divided by a positive 5 and a 10 divided by a negative 5. These are all equal to negative 2. If we were to write it out this way, we have a negative 10 divided by a positive 5 is equal to a negative 2. And a positive 10 divided by a negative 5 is equal to a negative 2. They have unlike signs, so the quotient is going to be negative. And no matter where the negative sign is placed, the quotient is negative 2. We can place it here. We can place it up with the numerator. We can place it down with the denominator. The quotient is still negative 2. Quotients can have negative signs in different places. We're going to let P and Q be rational numbers. The dividend, P, that's going to be the numerator, and the divisor, Q, that's going to be the denominator. If we have a positive dividend or numerator and a negative divisor or denominator, the quotient of P divided by Q is going to be negative. See how they have unlike signs, so it's a negative? If the dividend, the numerator, is negative and the divisor, the denominator, is positive, it's still negative. We have unlike signs. Now look what happens when we have like signs. When the dividend and divisor are both positive, of course the quotient's going to be positive. And when they're both negative, it's going to be positive. These are the same rules for multiplication. When dividing rational numbers, we use the same rules as multiplying rational numbers. Unlike signs produce a negative quotient. Like signs produce a positive quotient. Here it's written with a negative sign and then 10 fifths. Here it's written with the negative sign in the numerator with the 10, negative 10 fifths. And here we have 10 and a negative 5 for the denominator. These are all equivalent. Negative 10 divided by 5 is equal to negative 2. Unlike signs produce a negative quotient. And 10 divided by negative 5 is equal to negative 2. Unlike signs produce a negative quotient. When either the dividend or the divisor is negative, it won't affect the sign of the quotient. Either way, they'll have unlike signs and the quotient will be negative. So here it's written with a positive 10 for the numerator and a negative 5 the denominator. This represents 10 divided by negative 5. We can use multiplication to verify that the quotient is negative 2, that the value of 10 over a negative 5, negative 10 fifths, is negative 2. So multiplication is the inverse of division. They undo each other. We have negative 2 times a negative 5 is a positive 10. The factors have like signs, so the product is positive. The rules are the same as multiplication because division is multiplying by the reciprocal. Do you remember what a reciprocal is? Division is multiplication by the reciprocal. It's going to be a flipped upside down version of this 5 can be written, the negative 5 can be written over a 1, right? We can do that. We can write this over a 1. So we have 10 divided by negative 5 over 1. If we flip this around to a negative 1 fifth, we can multiply it and get a negative 2. So division is multiplication by the reciprocal. A reciprocal is also called a multiplicative inverse. The reciprocal of a fraction has the numerator and denominator flipped. So the reciprocal of two-thirds is three-halves. See how now the numerator is down here as the denominator, and the denominator is now up here as the numerator? 
When a fraction and its reciprocal are multiplied, their product will equal 1. If we multiply 2 thirds to its reciprocal 3 halves, 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 6, we have 6 over 6, that's equal to 1. So the sign of the quotient is not affected by the placement of the negative sign in the fraction. The sign can be in the numerator, it can be in the denominator, or outside of the fraction. Either way, the quotient is negative 5. We might even see it written like this with a negative sign on the outside. We can write two equivalent expressions for negative 45 fifths. We can write the negative sign with the numerator, and we can write the negative sign with the denominator. Either way, the quotient will be a negative 9. They have unlike signs, so the quotient will be a negative, and 45 divided by 5 is 9. We have a negative 9. Here it's telling us to write equivalent expressions for a negative 28 numerator and a negative 4 denominator. Well, since both the numerator and denominator have like signs, the quotient is positive. It has the same result as a positive divided by a positive. We could write it as 28 fourths. If we have a negative 28 divided by a negative 4, it's going to equal a positive 7 because they have like signs. And if we have a positive 28 divided by a positive 4, it's going to equal a positive 7. So either way it's written, like this or like this, we're going to get a positive 7, they're equivalent. And we can write an expression with one negative sign outside of the fraction, like this, or with the negative sign, open parentheses, 28 fourths, close parentheses. They're equivalent. Okay, we finished part A, we're going to move on to part B, quotients of rational numbers. So remember, if the numerator has a different sign than the denominator, then the quotient is going to be negative. And if the numerator and denominator have the same sign, the quotient's going to be positive. But the negative sign can be written either outside with the numerator or denominator, and we're still going to have the same quotient. Have a wonderful day. Join me for the next lesson. Bye.